What's up? How you doing? Here we are. Beautiful night tonight. And we're going to talk about Superman first. <clears throat> so, a little bit, uh, a little bit damp out here. Slightly. Look at that. Superman. This is a comic book. I think it came out in is it December 78. This is the one that discusses the, um, the secret as to why people can't recognize Clark Kent as Superman just because he wears glasses. <clears throat> so they explain in here that Clark Kent, Superman, has the ability to hypnotize people so that they don't recognize him. But, they didn't tell that to the 1950 Superman people because there's an episode in the 1950s where George Reeves playing Superman slash Clark Kent uh, gets amnesia somehow. <clears throat> and um, he's in bed, no glasses on, Jimmy Olsen, Lois Lane, and that uh, chief guy is in there. And they don't look at him and say, hey, wait a minute. Look at him. Looks like Superman. That is Superman. Nope. Uh, they can't tell. So this one explains that Superman has the power to hypnotize. <clears throat> so anyway. Then... I have the DC Comics Encyclopedia New Edition. And the Marble Marble. This one's even this is much heavier. I don't know, there's there's aspects of uh, the Marvel superhero collection that I like. Spider-Man, Hulk. But there's also a lot of heroes, superheroes that I like. Look at that helicopter there. <clears throat> there's a lot of superheroes I like in this. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. I love Flash. And let's not forget Mixoplex. So, you know, I mean, I I grew up watching Superman The Super Friends and I will tell you one of my favorite parts of that show, the cartoon. It was the um, they would give you kind of like advice <clears throat> and uh, one of them I remember um, Superman, uh, there was a kid who got something in his eye, dust or whatever, and Superman told him to take his, grab his eyelid, and pull it over the bottom one, and then tears will be created and flush out <clears throat> the dirt. So I always remember that. And like I said, I, I grew up watching more of the DC comics or the, the heroes or superheroes in DC than I did in Marvel, although I was a big fan of the Hulk. Big fan of the Hulk. And you know who's underrated? The Wonder Twins. And Wonder Woman. Oh, well, they call it the Invisible Jet. You could see the outline of it. If I have a, a, a window and there's a glass, a sheet of glass in there, does that mean it's invisible? No not invisible but this one has spider-man captain america i mean this when you open this up and read it there's uh, like 82 percent of the people in these books i've never heard of i don't know who they are they could literally make a movie every year for like a hundred years with all these uh you know heroes I'm not a fan of the uh, 
the new superhero movies. They're just too weird. You know, I liked it in 78, you know, those years when Christopher Reeves played Superman and he was Superman in the reality we live in. None of this nonsense where all the superheroes are together in some part of the, the, uh, the universe. That, you know, I want it to be like the 1950 Superman. That's what I enjoyed as a kid. I remember when I discovered George Reeves. And even though it was, you know, bad, the, the effects were horrible. But I still enjoyed it. You know, it was like uh, the corniness of it sometimes makes it even more enjoyable. So, Captain Cold, Captain Boomerang, Cheetah, I remember her. I used to watch the, uh, the superheroes there in the Hall of Justice. And I loved, I loved the building, first of all. It's a good looking building. And then they were always there. They never showed Superman going home. Although I think there was an episode where he, he went home. There was the one where they showed how each of them became who they are. And Flash. Flash was very scientific. Always had to speed up the, the molecules. But there's, there's so many in here. I've never heard of these people. Lots of information. I highly recommend these books. Highly recommend them. They see something cool here. I don't know who she is. Ice. Oh, I know who she is. I know who she is. But the Wonder Twins, underrated, underrated, especially the female, the female was amazing. She could turn into birds, you know, gorillas, lions. The other guy was all water-based. He could become like a, an iced uh, crowbar, an ice hammer, uh, a pail of water, put out a fire. That's not, you know, I mean, that's, that's okay, but she had the good stuff. I do remember I do remember a Saturday morning live action show called Electro Woman and Dinah Girl I used to love watching those things now I watch it but it's like I keep looking at the flaws and the ridiculousness of it but back when I was a kid I didn't look at it as being ridiculous I looked at it as being fun just like that other thing, that, that Wonder Bug. Wonder Bug was cool. They went to the junkyard. I always wanted to build a car from scratch. But anyway, they went to the junkyard and they found parts and they, they put this uh, schlep rock thing together. And then one of them found a horn, put the horn on, and he'd squeeze the horn and the thing would turn into a nice Wonder Bug. It could fly. So, yeah, one time, you know, because I was big time into go-karts, and I was, I was in my brain trying to figure out how to build one from, uh, from wood. But I wasn't even thinking about an engine. I was thinking about pedals, you know, like a bike. And I was thinking of putting six, three in the front, three in the back positions where you can pedal, and then you get six people. And you have a steering wheel, and they everybody would pedal. And you know, I don't know why I didn't think about putting two uh, two lawnmower engines in there, and just you know hitting the gas. But I was recently on YouTube for go karts, and I saw one where um, this this kid he built one out of wood, and I guess you can get his instructions for free. Yeah, 
I was a big fan of go-karts. <clears throat> I envisioned myself driving those things in town, in my, in my city. You know, and I always thought, yeah, you know, I could be like a grown-up. I could drive to the mall in my go-kart. I picture myself going down the main street and then parking at a parking spot at the mall. But then, then I found out that was illegal. You couldn't put those on the street. You ever watch these guys, they pretend they're spiritual, they have power, and they'll, they'll do something like that. Doesn't burn me. Doesn't burn me, look at this. All right, I wanna tell them, keep it there for 20 seconds, see what happens. 20 seconds, then I will believe that it doesn't burn you. I will not believe that it's supernatural, but I will say that, uh, you know, he's uh, he's fire resistant. But they do this, look at that. Doesn't burn me. Well, it doesn't burn me either. But I don't claim to have supernatural powers, no. So anyway, I don't know, nice night though. Just quiet. Wonder why uh, you don't you don't see many birds at night. Like there's no birds flying around at night having a good time. I'm not really a, a comic book guy. I rarely, rarely picked up and bought a comic book. The only thing I ever did with a comic book was I wanted to order the Charles Atlas course. And they had these cool ads. I'm sure they're in here. I haven't opened it yet. But they had these cool ads. You know, make a thousand dollars a week selling this, doing this, whatever. And then they had Charles Atlas in there. And uh, I go, wow, well, I wonder what this guy does to build himself up. So I've said this, I've said this before, but I ended up sending away for the course. <laughs> I, used to, I used to sit in my room at night and write letters. You know, can you please send me a catalog? <clears throat> and I um, ended up writing Charles Atlas, the company, because he wasn't alive at that time. Wrote a letter put my name in there and I told them you know I wanted the course and all that and then they sent me the information and I think it was like around a hundred dollars back then for the whole course <clears throat> and I said well that's a bit much I was a kid and so I forgot about it and then a couple of months or whatever it was a certain amount of time went by and they sent me a uh, an offer it was like seventy nine dollars and I said too much and then more time went by and it was down to like 59. Then it went down to like, I don't know, 39, then 25, whatever. Anyway, it went all the way down until one day I got a letter from them and it said, you know, final offer, <clears throat> 10 bucks. So I ended up buying it for 10. I went to my neighbor and I gave him a $10 bill and he wrote a check out for me. <laughs> and then, um, they had these vitamin pills and I said oh, I think I'll get these vitamins too it was like Charles Atlas vitamins I don't, I don't think they still make those but um so I sent away <clears throat> for the vitamins and there were these big brown horse pills that came so I started taking them and I I took them and then another month came by and they started automatically shipping me these things even though I never ordered them again and then I wrote them a letter I said please do not send me any more of these vitamins unless I order them and they stopped but I did that course 
for quite some time. It's all dynamic tension, you know. It's a, but, you know, I thought it was a good, uh, you know, good exercising experience. But anyway, yeah, uh, the, the Super Friends, the... I went with my father to see it. I was a kid. I remember he, he took me to see it. And then, um, and it's just, you know, I just think back then, I don't know what it was. Uh, my mindset was more geared to enjoying movies more. You know, now I go and I, it has to be a certain kind of movie too. I hate, <clears throat> I hate fantasy movies. I hate zombie movies. I hate Star Wars. Anything connected with Star Wars, I can't stand. Can't stand. I don't like those kind of movies. I want drama, comedy, real life events. You know, like The Deer Hunter. Big fan of The Deer Hunter. <clears throat> you know, anything else, if I go and I see a movie and it's not something that I'm interested in, I shut it off. I don't even pay attention to it. I'm thinking of all other kind of things. I'm thinking what happened back in 1977. I'm thinking about the first time I learned how to swim. I'm, I'm like really not into the, you know, if I see vampires and they're not Dracula, like the kind from uh, Romania, I don't even want to see it. I mean, I'm in there thinking, okay, how much time we have left here? You know, what are we doing for dinner? But in the old days, I used to go see only movies I liked, and it would pull me in. You know, it's like watching Nicole Kidman do those ads, and I would I would be uh, <clears throat> pulled in. So I saw Superman with my father; that pulled me in. And then I think it was before that, but I saw Close Encounters of the Third Kind with my father. We ended up going into the wrong theater, and the Goodbye Girl was playing. Right, Goodbye Girl, or that girl, Goodbye Girl. And right off the bat, I said, no, nah, this doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. So I said to my father, hold on. And I went out of that theater, and I went to the next theater right over across the hall. And I looked, and that one had the feeling that it was, you know, a, a UFO movie. So I called my father. I said, hey, uh, let's go over there. And we went in there, and we saw Close Encounters. I'm a big fan of these uh, possibility of alien life somewhere. I love those kind of movies, but I love them when they're, you know, kind of mysterious. Not when they're talking to us and they're, you know, they're evil, they want to take over our planet for the resources. You can go to many other places throughout the universe. You don't have to come here for that. They always say when they come here, they're going to be hostile. Why? What are they trying to do? Take over the planet? For what? You know, I'm, wherever they came from, because each, each star, the average distance between each star is about five light years. We're 4.2 light years from uh, Alpha Centauri. But every, every star in our galaxy is about five, five light years distance. So, I mean, if you're coming here from some far, far place, you don't have to come here. There's probably a ton of planets that you overlooked. You can go get those resources from those planets. You don't have to come here if you're here for bad reasons. <clears throat> I had a neighbor who was into these UFO things, and so was I as a kid. So I bought a book called Earth's Hidden Mysteries. And I remember I went over his place, and uh, I said, hey, uh, can you read me? I wanted him to read it to me, you know. Can you read me the UFO part? They had this section about UFOs, and he read it to me, and I was all pulled in, and he was, you know, he was into it too. <coughs> so, yeah, we used to talk about UFOs a lot in those days. That was a long time ago, but nothing... Nothing solid. I know they have whistleblowers. They say they've seen this, they've seen that. But so far, I haven't seen any evidence, any real evidence. 
you know. I mean, the first thing that gives it away is not being authentic, not being genuine, is that the camera is always out of focus. I mean, how come these iPhones can't take nice, crisp video, high-definition video? They're always out of focus. It's always too far. So the second you see something out of focus in today's world especially, you know it's fake. And then I look at these Air Force uh, videos. That's the kind of technology the Air Force uses where it looks like a, a shadow. You don't have anything better than that. Something that we could zoom in and read the uh, serial numbers. And we say, oh, the Air Force, the pilots, look what they saw. And you see this thing from the back. That does not mean anything. It does not prove anything. Fresh water. I don't know what kind of movies are out right now. I know Saw, that's coming out. I'm into those kind of movies. I like these, these movies that have the scary quality. I like scary movies. It has to be a certain kind, though. I like kind of, uh, for me, the scary movies that really do it are the scary movies that have a um, somebody with uh, a break from reality, like mental issues, mental problems, something like that. The, the supernatural stuff does not really scare me. I find those ridiculous. But, yeah. But Saw's very clever. And then, of course, you have the ridiculous Friday the 13th. Today's Friday the 13th. Look at that. Look what I can do. Ooh. Fireproof. I want to tell these people once again. Keep it there. 20, 30, 40, 50 seconds. Just keep your palm on top like that. For a minute. In close range. And if you can do that, I'll be impressed. I will not think it's supernatural though. Because I watched Scooby-Doo, and Scooby-Doo knew the show, the cast. They all knew that it was always a human being trying to fool people. Always had a logical explanation. Always. And that's the way it is in real life, too. Anyway. That's it for now. That's it. Ciao.